In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. And to talk about osteoporosis, I'm at the Charity in Berlin today with Dr. Felsenberg. He's the chief physician of the Department for Orthopedics, Osteology and Muscle. Right. Thanks for inviting me into your clinic. You're giving an IV line for a patient with osteoporosis? Yes, it's, it's not usual. The most of the, pa uh, the patients, they receive pills. But in this case, we need an injection, infusion, because uh, she does not tolerate these pills because of their stomach. How do you diagnose osteoporosis in the first place? Uh, in the former times, we are focusing on the bone mineral density measurement and said, well, if this value is minus 2.5, we say oh, osteoporotic bones. Today, these BMD values are only one risk factor and we need all the other risk factors as well. So other treatments, other uh, diseases, uh, the postmenopausal situation and things like that. If you add all these uh, risk factors, age, gender and uh, BMD and the risk factors, then we can di diagnose osteoporosis. Only after that you will start treatment. They need additional risk factors and uh, we calculate the risk of fractures for the next 10 years. And if the risk is higher than 30%, then we treat uh, with specific uh, treatments. Women are more prone to get osteoporosis than men. Why is that? Yes, so uh, women have the problem with the estrogen. Estrogen starts to act uh, uh, in the beginning of the ovarian function. And then the women have more bone than the um, muscles will imp uh, impact. And uh, this additional bone is for, uh, for uh, lactation and uh, uh, pregnancy. So after this phase of fertility, they are losing their estrogen and then this goes down fast. And within a couple of years, they lose the additional bone very fast and they have sometimes some strange situation with the structure of the bones. And uh, women have less muscle forces. And the muscle force is important for the density of the bone? Yes, they, uh, for the strength of the bone, the, the muscle force is important to have an uh, impact to have a, a strain, you would say strain, there's a deformation of the bone. If you increase the muscle forces, the strain is greater. And uh, uh, adapted to the strain, to the amount of strain, the bone is formating or is losing. And this is why men are less prone to get osteoporosis, because we do have more muscles. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Not everyone. Additionally. Additionally. But men do get osteoporosis. So. Yes, men do get osteoporosis. A quarter of all osteoporotic patients are males. And this is because of different diseases, pulmonary diseases, uh, diabetes, for instance, uh, uh, diseases uh, of uh, less testosterone and things like that. Okay, we got a viewer question from Australia. Amigen Pryke wants to know if there is any medication which can harden the bone after um, you develop osteoporosis. Most of the medications we are using today are hardening the bones because they have one th effect is anti-resorptive. They stop the loss of the bone. And in the time where they stop this loss, the bone becomes harder because there is a higher mineralization. And on the other side, of course, uh, there are some uh, compounds uh, existing with which you have osteoanabolic, so mean uh, anabolic uh, effect on the bones. You have more bone, new bone, and this is the best way to treat, but we have to inject day by day, like an insulin injection. And uh, well, for two years it is okay, but not longer. And we got a viewer question concerning the exercise from Clara Diaz Alves from Brazil. She wants to know if sport and exercise could actually hurt your bones if you suffer from osteoporosis. It depends how, what kind of sports you are doing. If you make a, a ketwandu or a judo or things like that, that is not good for your bones. But uh, you need some exercise which, is, uh, which are stronger, strengthening your, your uh, muscles. And the muscle is very important for stimulating the bones to grow and to become more stiff and more strength. And you need dynamic uh, movements. So stair walking or uh, walking in the, in the mountains. And here in your clinic you developed a special machine, it's called the Galileo system. And wh what do you do with this machine? You simulate sports? No, we don't stimulate sports, but we simula uh, simulate uh, walking. Okay. Walking means we, the movement for, the wa for walking is very important. And you have to harmonize your walking uh, activities. 
And with this system, you can organize the uh, activities of the muscles. You can coordinate your muscles again. Mostly, if you have pain, you have discoordinated muscles. So they are working not together, they are working against each other. And with this, you have a cramp, and that is painful. And with this system, you can really organize a new coordination uh, of these muscles. But in many health clubs, you can find vibration machines um, that uh, claim to do the exact thing. So why do I have to come to your clinic? <laughs> well, vibration is not vibration, and okay. it is not uh, the the effect is not to have a vibrating system. It is the effect that you have to coordinate muscles. That is a side alternative uh, movement of this uh, of this board, and that is the principle basic on this uh, intervention. And I can just do it with a walk. Yes, if you want to walk, you have to go ve walk very fast. And uh, I have developed a sequential power walking, that means not with sticks, but without sticks, uh, that you go very fast for 100 meters, okay. and then you go slowly for next, next 100 meters, and then you go very fast again. So this is very effective on uh, muscle, uh, muscle force and muscle power. Let's talk a bit about nutrition, or first about the supplement of parts of nutrition, about vitamin D. Everybody's talking nowadays about vitamin D. What role does it play in osteoporosis? Vitamin D is really very important. There is uh, a hype, but I think this hype is uh, of interest and uh, important, because vitamin D deficiency is, uh, has an uh, effect on a couple of different organ, organ systems. First, you need vitamin D for the resorption of calcium. Second, the muscles need vitamin D because there are a lot of vitamin D receptors in the muscles and therefore if you have less vitamin D you have weak, uh, weak muscles and the risk of fall is increasing with that. And all other different organs have thousands and millions of uh, vitamin D receptors and therefore vitamin D is important for not only bone and muscle but for other organs as well. So what about the role of general nutrition, about calcium levels, about drinking milk? Yes, it's very important to take care that you have enough calcium per day. Milk, milk products are very important, of course. But uh, if you are having lactose intolerance or some diseases or short bowel, then you uh, need additional calcium. And this additional calcium should not take by a pill. You should take it by mineral water or by selecting your, your foods. So you need about 1,000 milligram calcium per day. And uh, this is very easy to take. So only in specific cases you have to add some calcium pills, but this is only specific diseases. Eyal Thur Berg Svensson Ring from Iceland wants to know if drinking coffee could harm your bones. And he's drinking five big cups of coffee per day. Uh, four to five cups uh, of coffee per day, I think it's not really the problem. The, sci uh, the scientific uh, discussion is not finalized, at least because there are some studies which show well there is maybe a risk to have a loss of moans uh, or not. So at least I think if you need this coffee, drink it. What about the different calcium levels in cheese and in milk? Artemisia Cardimas from Greece wants to know if cow milk is comparable to goat milk, for instance. Concerning the calcium content, I think these uh, different milk sorts are very comparable. So if somebody prefers uh, sheep milk or goat milk, I think that is very good. So at least it is important not only for the calcium, it is important for the uh, proteins as well. Okay. Thanks so much for inviting me today into your clinic, Dr. Felsenberg.